Let's call this meeting to order. Meeting of the regular meeting September 20th for the New Kalala City Council. Welcome members of the council, the administration, all of you folks in the audience. And with that, we'll have a roll call. Mrs. Burner. All right. Mayor Lowry, absent. Councilman Grimm. I'm here. Councilman Eggleston. Here. Councilman Nowakowski. Here. Councilman Cobb. Here. Councilman Roadwald. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Six members present. And with that, we'll have the invocation by Councilman Cobb and followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Dear Heavenly Father, give us the guidance to do what's right for the citizens in the city. Also, watch over our military and their families, our first responders, our fire and EMS, and our deputies. Also, I would like to give our condolences to our past uh, vice mayor and council member to the death of his wife today. And I'm going to ask after I get done with the amen to have a moment of silence for Mrs. Lindsay. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we have action on the minutes for 8-23-21. Do I hear a motion? Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nokowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Robo? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 501. And with that, we need a motion for the work session of 9721. So moved. A motion and a second. Uh, first was Nowakowski, second was Eggleston, correct? Okay. Councilwoman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 6 0. And with that, we have the regular session of 9 7 21. I need a motion. Sitting Grim. Take the Grim. Second. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Here. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Those minutes are accepted 501. Okay. And with our communications, I think we've got some parks and work. Board afternoon, correct? We have none. All right, I guess we will accept their excuse then. City manager's report attached. If you will, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Vice Mayor uh, Cook, members of council, members of public, and of course administration. So we got some department reports for you uh, tonight. Uh, so we have the police report. Uh, are you prepared to read that police report today? Okay, great. And we'll do that with Deputy Ken Major Sack. Yeah. Hello, everyone. How are you today? Deputy Major Sack, uh, we've got, uh, with our police report, what we like to do is let you know what we have been doing out in the, uh, in the city limits. And uh, with the five deputies that we have now, this month we have patrolled 5,039 miles in the city. We have taken 195 calls for service. We've completed 29 reports. We have 41 assists. An assist can be uh, a medic assist if we go to assist a medic or something like that or another unit that's right close 
to New Carlisle that could be included in that. We had two felony arrests, six misdemeanor arrests. We had four warrants that we served, 45 traffic stops, 29 traffic warnings, 15 traffic citations. And we had um, 152 business checks with 141 citizen contacts. Uh, and a citizen contact is, uh, can be a, if we just walk up, somebody walks up to us, starts talking to us on the road. If we're at market days or something, somebody just wants to ask us a question, we consider that a citizen contact. Uh, I also consider my traffic citations a citizen contact because I'm talking to an individual at that time. A couple of things to note is uh, Sergeant Lehman wanted me to relay that the uh, city of New Carlisle is finally back up to full staffing levels. All the deputies have completed their training as of the last week and are not and are out working on their own. It uh, says that we should like to thank um, Deputy Joe Liming, which filled in for us on third shift, while one of our deputies that is here now full time was in training. Uh, wants to talk about the Heritage of Flight Toys for Tops Motorcycle Run. Uh, says the detail, detail has finally been uh, covered. Lieutenant Barnhart and Deputy Ken Majorsack will be working this detail and assisting in the motorcycle run. Uh, New Carlisle Heritage of Flight Extra Duty. The Extra Duty event will be posted tomorrow on Detail Commander so that we can have the deputies out here to cover that uh, detail as well. Um, we have a parking situation at our new building and we're trying to be as as limble and mobile as we can and moving around, but we have a business that's right behind us, the toy store. And they have, uh, they like for that not to be parked in front of as much as possible. Um, the problem that we ran into, and I think what one of the concerns of the citizen was, is our nighttime deputy, she doesn't live in the city, she doesn't live in, New, in, in this uh, Clark County. So that car doesn't go home with her. So she's been parking that car there and it's been there from the morning time when she gets off at seven until she comes in at 11 at night. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna ask her if she could just park across the street so it's not directly in front of the business or maybe in the back parking lot behind the um, coffee house. And maybe that will alleviate that problem. I think that's the main concern of that business is that one car's there all day long. She's a third shift deputy. She is a third shift deputy, yeah, so. So she can park on the street. I'd rather her park where she needs to go in and out for safety okay. reasons because the business is not even open at that time of hour. Okay, so, so well, the, think, the car sits there all day. I think something about the cruiser. Oh, the cruiser. Oh, yeah, yeah, the cruiser. I'm, I'm that sorry, that, was, that, that was the I concern. Was I think that was the concern that was brought to your attention today. Yeah, it was. Um, so that was the concern, and we're just Thanks. talking to her about moving that off to the other side. Uh, and I also wanted to let you know that all the radar units have been um, currently collected and are being sent off. So every year we have to have those radar units uh, calibrated because we can't do that. We only check the calibration in the car with tuning forks. It has to be calibrated every year at the state or, or somebody who does it for the state. So that's happening there. And unless you've got any questions for me, that's going to conclude my uh, report. Mr. Tom. We could pull Donald and and have her park it on Main Street. Well, we did. We got complaints about that too for a while. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Who complained? Um, why, why was it? Um, it was parked in front of the main entrance to 101. It was there for a couple weeks, and we used that as a firm of speed, the defer, the deferment, I guess you can call it. Um, <laughs> but it was just sat there, and people were complaining that it was taken in space in, in our downtown area, which they're very, very well, rightfully to say so. Um, so we, we just, I'll get with them and we can find an easy solution to this. Mr. Gunn. Is there a reason why the third shift deputy cannot drive that car home? Um, the, the only reason, as far as I know, sir, is that the, the sheriff doesn't allow the cruisers to go out of the county, whether that's marked with her markings that has her name on the side of it. Uh, I believe that's the reason why. We actually have a deputy that lives two houses outside of the county, and she won't allow them to take that car home either. So the, I believe that's the real. I don't think it has anything to do with the city. I think it's all with the sheriff's office. Anybody else have any questions? Matthew? Good. Good. Yes, I'm okay.
Uh, moving on, and thank you, sir. Moving on to the city manager report. We'll, we'll do our, um, I do believe fire chief is next. I can't see my agenda. Uh, there it is. And fire chief, you're on, you're on, bud. Thank you. Uh, council, citizens. Yeah, the, in the month of August, the New Claw Fire Division responded to 79 EMS calls in the city, 29 calls in Elizabeth Township. The division responded to 13 fire related calls in the city and zero in Elizabeth Township. We had five EMS calls answered by mutual aid to by Pike Township up the park uh, due to Medic 52 being on a response. Uh, we answered three mutual aid runs for Pike Township and we answered three mutual aid runs for Bethel Park. Uh, the division right now has also started hydrant flushings. If you look at the report, it shows an area A that's where we were at when I made the report. Uh, the guys have already worked up to where they're all, we are in area B now in the city of flushing the hydrants. We have been trying to keep up with Facebook post let people know where we're at uh, for flushing and uh, we should hopefully be completed within the, within the month. Other than that, everyone else is moving on. I have one comment, Chief. Yes, sir. I wish to thank you and the department for the 9-11 presentation yes, you made on Saturday 9-11. I thought it was a uh, very nice program, and I'm sure that those of us that attended were very pleased with what you provided to us. Does anybody have anything else for you? Very good. Any update on the new command truck? I noticed the last. It was. It seen as better days out there. Well, yeah, now especially since it got hit. Yes. Last word I've heard is it's supposed to go on construction line in October. So now that doesn't include a chip and all that. So it's anybody's guess when we'll see that do. Okay. Anyone else? If <coughs> not, sir. Thank you, Brian. I too frustrated. Uh, and moving on to finance report, I did excuse our finance director, Ms. Harris, uh, from the meeting tonight. She's going through some personal issues, so I'll be stepping in in her place. So let's go ahead and read the uh, main page that she does uh, monthly with her finance report. Um, so for the month of August 2021, uh, 2021 revised total estimate, um, estimated revenue, I'm sorry, $6,273,000. Um, our, our 2021 revised total budget is $7,511,872. For the month received, uh, revenues received to date, uh, $6,461,290.81. And our expenses to date are uh, $4,848,413.04. So we have our statement of cash and revenue expenses, uh, ending balances uh, across all funds. What we have available to us today is $5,622,984.75. Um, so we go on with the bank reps, and then we have our various uh, bank report, check report, expense report, uh, revenue report. Uh, I'd be happy to entertain any questions on those. Are there, there are no questions. Any we'll questions? If not, I think I need a motion to accept the finance director. Second. Graham and Eggleston. <laughs> Councilman Okowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rodewald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. That motion's accepted 6 0. And before we go on to Mr. Kiko, there are two other things I wanted to talk about on here, real quick. Um, our income tax collections are still up. I think last time we reported about 14%. Uh, right now we're up 16.12% compared to this time last year. And the pool profit loss right now we have this is uh, calculated from August from 2014 to August of 2021. Uh, so for this year, as it stands, I'm sure there'll be some uh, for a few more bills to come in. Uh, for the 2021 season, the pool made a profit of $7,955. Uh, since 2014, overall loss of $87,093. Uh, let's not focus on that loss. Let's just focus on that great year they had. Uh, so hats off to the pool. Uh, again, it's not a final number yet, but it should be moving in the right direction. Income tax, again, is also a good thing. So we always like to see that. 
All right, and moving on with the service uh, manager report, our service report with Mr. Kitko. Thank you, Mr. Bridge. Good evening, members of council, members of the public. Um, under Public Works Department, uh, so angle parking, as I had stated, will not be feasible. Uh, the prices did come in after this report was uh, completed on Wednesday. Uh, we will have striping on Main Street between Jefferson and Washington, on Washington, just on the uh, west side, and then on um, Jefferson on the west side of Main Street to uh, put spaces in there. I think there's about 42 spaces, and then we're marking the ADA spots accordingly. So that'll be sometime um, early next week that the, that striping should be done. They'll be we'll be getting posting no parking for that, so we can get that striping. If it looks like it works pretty good and everybody stays within those, we may move the parking down in front of CVS and the church and stuff like that to help, you know, instead of maybe parking nine cars in there because people don't get in there. Now we should have, I think it's at least 12 on each side of Main Street now. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, again, dirt patch is still going. If you got any potholes, definitely call. Um, my crews right now uh, just finished up installing the speaker wire, so the speakers will be up. Hopefully tomorrow I can get the system going. And then we got to get the concrete poured, obviously, before the festival there in front of Sugar Shell. Uh, don't need anybody falling there. Um, water department, not a whole lot going on new other than I did submit for that infrastructure grant for $2.5 million, uh, where our share will be approximately, I think, 20-some um, thousand plus, you know, what our engineering may be. Uh, they told me about 45 days for a selection. If we get it, uh, I keep checking the thing, but I have yet to hear anything. Um, I was number eight on the county's priority list out of 10. So um, hopefully we'll, we'll get some bonus points at some point for that. The uh, sewer department, we did meet with some engineers. Uh, everything's going pretty good with some uh, planning for the future. We did all but this last percentage. We have a meeting with OPWC. Uh, in the next week or two to finalize our approval for that 50% grant for next year's uh, clarifier project. So again, uh, we're getting two clarifiers working on the agreements done right now that will get done with ARP money and then the next uh, year will be 50-50 with uh, ARP and OPWC. And lastly, um, well almost last, Fenwick phase one, uh, I'll be getting a resident letter out early this week. That should be starting probably next week to get Fenwick phase one. Between Scott and Kinnison Street, uh, fully reconstructed. That's uh, curb gutter, asphalt, and approaches, and some new um, dry wells. And then on the county engineers for resurfacing, I did pass out resident letters to those streets that have been on the, on the report for some time. Deerfield, South Scott there, between Madison and Linden, Sunset and Cambridge Court. Uh, they, they're supposed to be in this week to Mill and Phil, but you know, now of course rain's coming in, so. Uh, that could get delayed a couple of days, but maybe not. Uh, very last thing is Madison Street School demo is complete. It has been all removed. Um, it has been brought up to grade. It was compacted to um, standards, so it would be technically ready to build on tomorrow. Um, it's been seeded straw, so hopefully with the rain we'll get some seed coming up. And that is all I got on my report. Oh, and street sweeping will be starting uh, sometime this uh, middle of this week. Mr. Cobb. Mr. Pico, I had discussed with the city manager at the last meeting about looking into hiring somebody to work on the equipment. Rather, you know, we were paying a man to just change the oil and put air in the car. Would it be feasible to go out like to the county? to do all the maintenance on the equipment, the cars, the trucks, and et cetera. I mean, it don't have to be the county, but several places around it mm -hmm. work on the equipment. I mean, a lot of them are going to send out anyway. We do almost all the general maintenance, all of it. It's the only time that we send it out is when we get into um, stuff that we can't keep up with the computers. Um, we just can't keep up with uh, the various brands, with the Dodge, the Fords we got. If we get into that technical, we just can't keep one person up who does share duties as a mechanic and as the street guy. Um, but most of that is done, and then we use local vendors such as Jenkins, Nuclear Chrysler, and then uh, Jeff's Automotive to um, supplement what we need for repairs. I mean, I'm just based on this. We have to definitely, when we took it up town, it was eventually going to take it up to the van's office. And they had the piece of quick or the plug for the computer. 
Mm -hmm. and the I'm unaware of that, so I would have to follow up. Go ahead, Mr. Grimm. Do we have everything set up for the community cleanup on Saturday? I was going to ask you partially the same question. I do have a couple people who can work. I, I don't know your volunteers that you've gotten. We've had several people say that they volunteer, whether they show up or not is a different question. But we may, if worse comes to worst, we can ask people to help unload their own stuff. Okay, we will try to do our best. I'm going to go through some of the union employees to see if some can help out. I do have a couple people coming, uh, maybe myself and a few others that have um, that will help out. Um, so we'll we'll get it done way one way or another. We have the dumpsters lined up. Yep. Yeah, we got dumpsters. We have two trailers and trucks for tires. We will not be accepting appliances this year. Uh, but if anybody's got any mercury, uh, double bag it. We will take uh, the mercury, and then we'll be taking everything over to the county on Monday or Tuesday. And the registration table, maybe a canopy over it. Mm -hmm. Yep, we'll have all that stuff, just like normal. Okay, cool. And also, real quick, is um, we did lose our pride workers who typically help out building the stage. So I've been working with the mayor on the flight committee to assist. So if you know anybody that's handy with the uh, impact guns, drill guns, uh, knows how to level and straighten stuff and assemble, we could use someone probably later on this week or early next week to assemble the stage. Great, I'll be over on that one today. <laughs> For those of you who know me, no, I do not do power tools. It's just a good mm -hmm. <laughs> No, I'm here on the last guy you want over there. I will run the city from afar, yeah, <laughs> from a distance. <laughs> you don't want me doing any kind of yeah, mailing or anything like that. Right? How many uh, people do you envision that we're going to need up there? Huh? Uh, typically, we use about five or six. Most of the pride workers hauled and moved the pieces, while um, my two guys would screw it all together and hold things up. Because some of the stage now has those upper things that they get ready for the, um, it's, for lack of a better word, easy up, the big, the big canopy that's up there. So if we got, you know, three or four people that could just help move all the platforms, because they stay pretty, they keep them together. So it's not too many pieces, but they got to unload it. They got to get it from the place up north that stores it for us, get it down, and then start putting it together. Okay, how many are you looking for on Saturday? Um, Saturday, be nice to have about at least five to six people to assist the two or three that I think I got committed. All right. With that, does anybody got anything else for Mr. Pitko? I have one other thing. Um, there was a complaint about a bench that had some broken boards in it right directly across from the shoulder house. I assume. I haven't looked, but I assume it's the one bench uh, just down over the hill. Okay. Um, I don't know whether you had seen that or not. I have not heard. Um, I do have a, well, I do have a, a couple guys short right now due to um, COVID. So the inspection didn't happen in the last week or so. So I will check into a bench down over the hill, you said? Down over the hill. So you might have one of the guys check over there. Other than that, I uh, I think Mr. Tipton just volunteered for Saturday along with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard him. Yeah. He, he volunteers really well. Are you, are you coming? Okay. Come on. Let's not do it no more now. <laughs> Other than that, if nobody's got anything else from Mr. Kitko, we'll go back to uh, Mr. Bridge. I got, I got one thing if I could. Can I just I'm address? Sorry. Yeah, can I just address Mr. Cobb with the cruiser issue, just real quickly, with the comment that he had made? I just want you to know what had happened with that is we tried to run it. Her cruiser was setting up the east office because she had a couple days that she was off, and the battery it, it just went dead. So what we did was we ran that down to AutoZone and just put the tester on it, and it indicated that we needed a new battery. So we got a hold of Dave Coleman, and Dave Coleman had a new battery in that car in hours. Uh, it was taken it's care awesome. of and, and done. And the other issue that we had with uh, Mike Garman's car was a battery issue as well, but once the new battery was put in, 
the solenoids that the, the like the spark plug things that run it were bad so the car wasn't running good at all and then it went right over to jeff's and then they got it done within days for us as well so i just want to say that we have as a sheriff's office have absolutely no problems with the way that the cars are maintained here they take care of us the best that they can and we just try to self-diagnose it ourselves if we can with AutoZone just to put that on there to tell if it's just a battery or something simple like that. Well, all I was looking at, if, if we don't have the piece to plug in for the computer to tell us what's wrong, we need to look into that. Oh, okay, okay. I, very good. I understand what you're saying now. I mean, you know, from what I was told that the, they could not plug into the computer if these things must see with Vance Auto. And Vance Auto had to plug into the computer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they may not have that device that, that AutoZone has that tells us what's going on. They may not. I don't know. That's something the city needs to look into. Yeah, but if AutoZone does it for free, if AutoZone does it for free, why would we go and spend thousands of dollars on a big? Yeah. Yeah, it's not. It's not that expensive. We'll look into some things for you, Mr. Cobb, and get back. But any big changes will have to require a vote of council. But it just sounds like. We, our mechanic does what he, he's capable of, and we vend her out for the stuff that's going to take a lot of his time. Because our, our mechanic also helps out in our street department, so we have a balance with, with that there. But um, thanks for letting us know about how that works out. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I think we're good. We're ready? All right, so moving on, thank you again. Moving on to the city manager report, the planning and zoning report with our planning director, Mr. Hutchinson. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> Um, uh, I added the first part of this compliance, uh, code compliance part of my uh, report. I added some dollar figures. We don't normally associate coding, you know, code enforcement and everything with money. Uh, but I wanted to start putting a little more detail into that. Um, so far this year, uh, we have prepared uh, almost $16,000 uh, in invoicing to uh, property owners for cleanups and mowings and that type of stuff. Uh, so when those go unpaid, there's an additional 10% added to that, and that's what gets assessed to the taxes. Uh, and how that works, that won't go on to their taxes until the following following year. Um, but that's where we're at, is, is at least until the, uh, up to the end of uh, August. So we have added on to that um, already this month. Uh, of course, here's our uh, 2021 statistics, uh, January through the end of August, uh, up to 444 total violations uh, have been identified. Uh, activity type, we're up to 824 for the year, and that's going to be in fact, communication, inspections, reinspections. Uh, and keep in mind, we, we still we have one part-time uh, code enforcement officer that uh, that works about 30 hours a week, and he's doing a great job. Yeah. Very experienced, so he's uh, he can handle the, the pressure. Uh, zoning, we are at uh, 75 received zoning applications year to date. Uh, 70, uh, as of today, 72 of them have been approved. Uh, and uh, also for the permitting, we've we've approximately collected $2,800 in zoning permit fees up into the uh, uh, end of August. Economic development, community development, uh, our tooling center is still going strong uh, down here at the, at the bottom of the hill here. Uh, we've added a visceral carpet cleaner to the uh, inventory and also I uh, did break down and do the electric chainsaw. We've been getting a lot of requests for chainsaws. It, to me, it's a little scary sounding, so I went with a smaller electric one uh, that will do smaller jobs. Um, but uh, we're constantly adding to that uh, and, and people are using it. It's, it's working out great. So uh, uh, just keep that in mind for all the residents out there listening or, you know, or if you get calls. Um, we have we have the mowers, we have hand tools, electric tools, power tools. Um, instead of going out and spending something, you know, a lot of money on something you may only use once or twice, uh, just give us a call and we'll we'll get to that tool. So, uh, 210 Pike Street. Uh, we had the asbestos tested. It did test uh, positive for asbestos. We had the removed. Uh, here it says preparing for bids. We actually did receive bids and uh, awarded the contract uh, for our, uh, a com contractor do that demolition so it should be down within the next couple of weeks uh, 2021 uh, the chip program uh, we are still waiting uh, to hear the final on that if uh, if the application was approved uh, by the end of October is what I'm being told uh, and still pretty uh, pretty optimistic on that that, that that we should get that and that grant will focus on owner occupied rehab owner occupied emergency repair and first-time homebuyers assistance 
Um, I am very familiar with these programs. I work with them in, all, in other communities that I work with, and they are great for our community. Uh, then continuing projects, uh, we have the uh, I have a new brochure that I'm in the works with, the economic development brochure. Uh, comp plans ongoing, CDBG grant, CHIP grant, we're waiting uh, for that. Uh, we're pretty much almost finished up on the, some storage organization that we do, uh, condensed from other buildings, the old substation. Zoning code review is still ongoing, and uh, exterior property maintenance code reviews. I did add a third page uh, that you had there on your on, in front of you, and that's just a little something different too. Uh, it, it's more to show um, our condemnation and nuisance abatement program or a procedure how we do. Uh, these are the properties that we currently have condemnation or nuisance abatement orders on, and it kind of shows you kind of how effective that tool is. Out of these out of these properties that we have condemned or have a nuisance abatement on. We have action on every single one of these properties. So uh, whether it's being prepared for a demolition, scheduled for demolition, or the owners have started to apply or, or comply with uh, a compliance agreement, or uh, that process helped urge them to sell the property and the, and the properties have been turned over. One of those, which is the Fenwick or the Apprentice property that had been vacant for over 40 years, um, has, has getting completely overhauled. So. Um, this program is, is effective, um, and I just wanted to show you just kind of some spec or some uh, stats there that show you how long some of these properties have been. So, and these were the ones that are identified worst as the worst. So, just imagine the worst of the worst getting taken care of. The next worst of the worst aren't going to be as bad. Um, I did run some reports today, and we currently that we know of have at least 43 vacant properties uh, in the city. Now, it doesn't mean that they're bad properties; they're just currently vacant. So. We will pay more attention to those to kind of see where they're at as far as statuses, if they're you know being um, taken care of or and, and everything. So um, that's all I got. If anybody has anything for me, I take compliments too. I do take compliments. <laughs> anybody have any questions for me? Go ahead, Your beard looks nice. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if we get approved for the uh, chip grant, yep. how much is how much money is the city looking to get? Uh, it's quite a bit. I believe the, don't quote me, I think the total amount was 700000 And I think our, our, our cut was going to be from the county, it was going to be, I think it was well over 250000 So that will go a long way. I mean, there's, you know, there's, there's specs, there's uh, limits of how much and there's maximums that we could get on those that someone could be approved for. But uh, I mean, even, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars that goes a long way on a, on a single house. So, uh, and that rehab and the emergency repair kit, I mean, that could be anywhere from roofing, uh, from HVAC systems, uh, electrical, uh, and then the first time home buyers is a, is a great program. I mean, that's, they consist not only on down payment assistance, but if, say, if they are interested in a house uh, and there are code issues that aren't up to code, that could go toward repairing those. So they buy their first home, it's, it's, it's code compliant. Um, so these are great programs. Uh, once we get approved for that, I will flood the information and brochures and everything. Three, three, I'm sorry, 300,000 is what that would be our cut on that. So that divvied up with those three programs and, um, and, and like I said, there's, there's maximum limits and, and then and they work sometimes, they're, uh, depending on income qualified, they could be forgivable loans or they could be uh, you just pay back at certain times of the year. Uh, they even have programs where it, it, if you sell the house, that's when you would have to pay the loan back. Um, but it all varies on the, on the, on the, on the each, each case varies. But a great program, it's very, I'm excited to have you here. Go ahead, Mr. Grimm. May I back up for Mr. Kitko? Yeah, go ahead. Remembered. Nothing for me? No, sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Madison Street School, I've had a number of people ask me what the city plans on doing with it. Do we have any ideas? I'll take that. Okay. Yeah, it needs to be directed towards me. Um, we don't have any plans at this point, i to be honest with you. Um, that's going to take council involvement if we have to get to that point in time. So right now it's just going to be seated, and we won't maintain it as far as the grass cutting goes. Uh, one of the things that we're going to talk with Mr. Kitko about is only cutting maybe a few, street, uh, few uh, strips back instead of maintaining the whole big parcel but you can get some grass up there um, we have to look at changing the zoning some some of the things that's going to come back to you guys is that a while ago the city changed the zoning on it but it was not done in the correct manner 
So we'll, I'll be getting you some uh, information that has to revert to what it was before, which is R2. And then moving forward, uh, we'll have to get with council how they want to do that. More importantly, uh, we'll have to get with the planning board because they're responsible for all that kind of stuff too. See what kind of zoning they want on it. And then, you know, get with council about see where your guys' vision is with that. You mean when they made it uh, low density housing that was done improperly? Yes. It was zoned office apartment, and then the city council just voted to change it to R2, which is to go through the proper procedures. Uh, so that will have to revert back to office apartment. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But all that really does is dictate what can go on top of it. You know, anything that we do, anything bad, anything big as far as that development goes, the council will be involved pretty much every step of the way. Uh, just over seven acres. Okay. The size of the parcel. Yeah, it's like six, seven acres. Six, seven acres. Anybody else? So, if we were to offer that for housing, probably have to cut a street back to there. When we looked at changing it to R2, uh, that's what that council wanted at that point in time. So R2 zoning is going to be a lot similar to where we are on Linden on the left side if you're driving on it from Main Street. So bigger houses, bigger yards. So we did the calculations on it back then. This was cool crap. 14, 15. Uh, we got about seven houses, seven or eight houses just based on R2 zoning. Uh, that's probably not the best zoning for that particular parcel. So we'll get our planning director, the planning board will have to chime in and we'll probably recommend them that going through. I don't want to speak ahead of ourselves by like an R4 or R5 to allow for uh, some condominiums or some single family homes. But two, council also need to decide what you want to do with that parcel because if you ever want to build somewhere, we don't, the city owns a lot of land, but we don't have a lot of land that we can develop on. So that's something you will have to present to council as well. Ultimately, be your guys' decision how you want to move forward. <coughs> now I'm done. <laughs> now For you're sure. Done. Okay, anybody else? Back to you, Mr. Bridge, I guess. Awesome. And you said how much of the vacant house count was? 40? 43 is what we least, that's what we have, that's our count per our uh, utility, our water utilities. Um, so, uh, and like I said, that doesn't mean that it's abandoned or anything. It just means there is no occupants at that at that property um, at that time. It's actually a healthy sign. That's why I want to ask because not too long ago we were averaging anywhere from 71 mm -hmm. to 77 houses uh, vacant uh, a month. Just this time last year, I was well over 150 on our vacant list. So this time last year, that's a strong indication of the housing market. What we're doing as far as uh, flipping houses or getting them back on the market if we're paying in the houses. So it's a good, it's a good number. Awesome. Uh, are you are we ready to move on? Um, you done with I'm done. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. And moving on with the city manager report under informational items. I will be out of the office uh, this uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday at the GFOA annual conference. Uh, that'll be in Cincinnati. <laughs> Um, fixed assets valuation and tracking. Uh, have a little discussion note. I did sign an agreement with CBiz. They're going to come down and start that actually October 12th through the 14th. Um, we're going. It's going to be uh, the project. Whole project will be under $15,000, which is a steal. We were projecting that to be almost 2025. 20, uh, I was thinking I'd have to come back to get spending authority, but it actually came well below that we were uh, anticipating. So that's fantastic. And just to remind council, that is a crucial piece of our clean budget award that we want to get within the next couple of years to have that asset tracks fit. So um, we'll have that done before the end of this year. So after this uh, year's audit, we will should not have it dictated uh, on our management level anymore, which is a fantastic move in the right direction for us. Um, Clark County EMA COVID update is attached. Uh, please take a look at that. It is rather lengthy, but it is full with some good information. And upcoming legislation for council, and this hasn't changed since the last meeting, but codification numbering updates, um, October, November, as well as the employee generally code section update, October, November. I did go ahead and amend the ongoing projects. As we can see, and I want to thank council for giving us time over the past couple of months to get some of these cleared out. We can see that it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller. We are going to be adding to it, but I did want to update that and say, hey, thanks for uh, letting us have a breather this past couple months because it really has made a huge difference. Um, that's all I have for the city manager report. Be happy to entertain any questions.
Anyone have anything for Mr. Bridge? Go ahead. Uh, have we moved the files out of the old substation? Pretty um, sure we're getting close. I know Mr. kiko has got some things on the second floor we're going to go get to, um, but uh, with these demolition prices coming in so low, we want to go ahead and try to get that done. So if we don't have it out in a timely manner, and I'll get with Mr. Kiko about that. I don't want to miss the opportunity to maybe get that demoed. I'm thinking about just ordering a storage pod and keeping some stuff in there so we can just go through with the demolition and get that done for this year. Yeah. That's where my head's at with that. Yeah, I'm already, I'm already halfway done, and I'll probably finish it up tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And I already got my quote for demo on it. Sure. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anyone have anything else? If not, we'll move on to comments from the members of the public. Please keep your comments limited to five minutes or less. Please go to the podium and name and address the clerk. Go ahead, sir. Uh, my name is Brandon Wright, 233 Prentice Drive. Um, I just had a question for the administration and the council to see if they were interested at all in basically creating a more competitive internet market. Um, I know I've emailed, I think, the administration twice, the planning department, the general, and was forwarded to the city manager twice mm -hmm. about it, but I haven't had a response um, on building up the infrastructure for the internet. Um, what I'm talking about in particular is Metronet. Uh, their prices compared to Spectrum, um, if they were to come in town, their prices are actually pretty decent and better than Spectrum in some aspects, which would provide a more competitive marketplace for both providers, while also granting like 10 times faster speeds than any other competitor that we have in New Carlisle, because it is fiber optic internet. Um, I was wondering if the city was planning on anything along those lines, because I know um, if a small town like West Milton can do it out in the middle of nowhere, then we should be able to do it. <laughs> West Milton did there based off the COVID money they got. Okay. So we earmarked our money for purposes that would be more beneficial for the city. Okay. Uh, we don't have a lot of complaints on our internet speed. Um, it depends on where you're looking, because there, there's a lot. Yeah, the, there's a lot in the community, sir. Yeah, I'm sure there are. I'm sure there's dead spots in every municipality you go to. Um, I haven't responded to your email nope. because I just don't feel as though the city's there. We have got other big issues that we need to tackle. Uh, infrastructure issues mainly, our streets, our vehicle infrastructure. Uh, that would really benefit the city as a whole moving forward. Um, we get a lot of emails and voicemails for cold calls so all the time at the city building. So a lot of those do go unanswered. We didn't mean to be rude or disrespectful to you. Oh, no, I understand. All that they're there all the time. Um, but. You know, it's something we can look into in the future. I just don't think we're there yet, just based off the finances that we have. Okay. Yeah, I was just wondering because I didn't want the city to fall behind because everywhere around us has it. Huber Heights, Vandalia, West Milton, other places are getting it. It's expanding, and I was just kind of wondering where our city was at with that because mm -hmm. a lot of the city seems like it's fallen behind in certain areas of the time, technologically wise. Oh. What do you know about, I mean, Mr. Kitko is the guy who really does the internet here. We have fiber at Main Street, don't we? There, there's some fiber, but I heard there's a company coming up through 40 through, from Park Lane, Everstream, I think is coming up fiber. They're going to run fiber all the way up to the AT&T Tower that was an option. And um, other than that, I'm not aware. I mean, there is fiber down Main, but there's not fiber far enough for us to like tie in. Because like, we, we would love to get all our buildings in one fiber line and be able to communicate. Okay. But I know it's not out there. It's not underground. But there's supposed to be a company coming through and going to run it overhead. They're going to take second line below power and then move AT&T down. Um, but other than that, that's all I kind of know. Of what was the name of that company again? Because I'd like Ever, to do my I, research on it. I believe it's Everstream, Everstream. and they're working with AT&T. I think they're coming up uh, 235 from 40. And then where you see our main power lines running through the alleys behind Main Street, yeah. that they're going to follow and take over uh, what they call it, second line, um, all the way up through the tower on Addison, New Carlisle. Okay. All the way up there, are they going to branch out any, or are they just going down the main drag? I don't know what their purpose is other than helping AT&T and doing something um, with the guy. He was just calling for permits to see, and I said, that's not our property. You can run overhead all, all you want. So, all right. That's good information. Thank you. Other than that, that's all I had. Thank you. Anyone else? If 
have not. No committee reports. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll go to resolution. All right, we have resolution 2021-16R, introduction, public mm -hmm. hearing, and action tonight. A resolution accepting the official certificate of estimated resources for 2022 along with the tax year 2022 rates and amounts certification from the Clark County Budget Commission. With that, do you want to expand on that, Mr. Bridge? Yeah, sorry, in my head, thinking about something. Uh, so did you read it? I just read it, yes. Uh, this is an extra yearly ordinance we do uh, to start our overall budgetary process for 2022. Do I hear a motion? Move to accept. Second. Motion by Mr. Grimm, second by Mr. Lord Wall. Any further comments? Have none? Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowkowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Accepted six zero. Right. Moving on, we have Ordinance 2021-36. Um, this is the one where we, you will yes. make the amendments first. We'll motion to accept the amendments. And then, let me find where I have this one. Described by the board. All right, so let me read it. An ordinance establishing a schedule of fines and costs and a bail bond schedule for the city's mayor's court. And the first one will be the amendment to approve as amended per the bolded items. Do I hear a motion on the amendment? Peggy is first. Second. Yeah, second by Mr. Woodwall. Yes, this is for the amendment. And I've got Eggleston as the first, Roadwald as the second. All right. All right. Any further discussion? Okay. Mm -hmm. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Alkowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. That motion's accepted 6-0. All right, then I assume we need a motion to accept the ordinance. As amended, correct? Second. Eggleston and Grimm. Grimm was the second. Who was first? Peggy. Peggy. Any further discussion? Okay. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Nowkowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Roadwald. Yes. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. That motion's accepted 6-0. And then our last one is Ordinance 2021-37E, Introduction, Public Hearing, and Action Tonight. An ordinance authorizing the expenditure of funds of over $20,000 and authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for IETT, AAS, and compliance services and declaring an emergency. So I need a motion to suspend the rules. For, Am I correct? No. Oh, okay. Yes. Not, not for this one. But we do need six affirmative votes since it is an emergency measure. All right. And so far, I need a motion. Peggy. If anyone saw that, we were just Second. kidding, by the way. <laughs> <It's illegal. laughs> Second was Roadwald? Yes. All right. First was Angleston. All right. The explanation of this, as described in the work session, we have to beef up some of our internet stuff. Uh, municipalities are getting hacked left and right. Um, our liability insurance renewal application for 17 pages this year, just based off IT. So we kind of want to get a one exclusive contract with the bridge group. We've been dealing with them. We have all these little other contracts. We kind of want to streamline it into one. Um, we, as is dictated in the uh, legislation, there is a not to exceed amount of $65,000 a year. We need to exceed that. We'll clearly come back to council when the time comes. But that's basically what the meaning of this one is. And it is an emergency due to the deadline of us needing to have something to do. Any further discussion? <coughs> All right, Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. 
Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Nowakowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Rogold? Yes. Pass the six zero. And moving on to other business, um, the city offices will be closed on Monday, October 11th to observe Columbus Day. Um, any other additional city business? I got a couple items. Uh, Go ahead, everybody. Okay, I need a motion to excuse Mayor Lowry. Yes, the both work session in the regular session. Okay. And Grim was the first. Second, Rogel. Okay. Vice Mayor Cook. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Yes. Councilman Eggleston. Yes. Councilman Okowski. Yes. Councilman Cobb. Yes. Councilman Rodewald. Yes. Motion to excuse Mayor Lowry. Accepted 6 0. Also, there was a discussion here in the past about uh, having another coffee and donut station. And I believe, well, it was to be the first Saturday in October, but since you were going to have the uh, parade and the heritage flight, it's been talked about having it the 9th, which I believe Peg is heading up at this point we haven't come up with a location but if it's all right with council we'll work towards that end for the second i'm sorry the ninth and i would assume it'll be somewhere in the downtown area since uh, we've already done it well, Uh, one, I mean, Mike, 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 on donuts. We don't care about yeah, that. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, that was a lot last time. My <laughs> Is there any, any further discussion? Go ahead, Ron. Also, I want to put it in the hands of the city manager to get a card for Mrs. Lindsay and just sign it from all accounts on the city employees. Okay, I can do that. Do you guys want to come up and sign or you just want me to sign for you? Just sign it all from all council and all city employees. Gotcha. I, okay. Um, coffee and donuts. You just want to do the same format we did last time. There's really no sense of overthinking it. I'll just run with it. All right. I'm going to get bills this time, though, because I, bills were just closed for that particular time of year. Right. Maybe five dozen opposed to, what, we got seven last time? Four? Four? Done deal. Well, what, what time? The time? Nine. 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 Twelve. Nine. Twelve. Okay. And you don't have a location yet. No, we're doing it downtown. One hundred one. Two one one. Okay. Okay. I guess that's the sign. Do you want to keep those donuts up there since it's going to be a much bigger crowd, which we possibly? Now this is the week after the heritage. Is there a farmer's market that morning? Please. Is there a farmer's market that morning on the 9th? Or is it done by then? Yeah, there's farmer's market. Because the last time we just talked about with the sign that says, come meet your council at the other end. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. If we could get a sign, put it to farmer's market, and then we have it at 101 or Is there anything else we need to discuss on the coffee and donut? Okay, I've thanked the fire chief. We've got Mayor Lowry. Anybody got anything else? Yes. Um, I can make a motion to have a trick or treat on October 30th, 6th okay. which is what Double Township is doing. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Mr. Grimm. 
Okay. Councilman Eggleston? Yes. Councilman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Trick or treat on October 30th. Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. And Councilman Grimm? Yes. That motion's accepted 6 0. Anybody got anything else to bring? Go ahead, Mr. Grimm. If past year's city council has been a part of the parade, will we be doing that this year? Without uh, the mayor's office, um, I don't know whether or not they're having any of the politicians in the parade. I don't think they let them in. My, oh, I'm sorry, sir. I don't think they let them in the year before, right? They didn't let them politic. No. As long as they. Two of them saw him, uh, Calhouse, all they do is pass out the gift, same thing else. Pass out, brochures, and that's it. But they can't go through the parade or anything. But if you have problems, uh, four years ago. So basically, as I understand it, uh, anybody that wants to ride in the parade in a car, we're okay? Yeah. Well, they don't uh, say, you know, their thing for whatever they do. We're talking about city members, not candidates. Yeah, I think that was always been the way in the past. Well, I don't know. We had the candidates in the past. But, uh, <laughs> Were there, was there any comments in regard to the candy and the things that were passed out and thrown? Yeah, but they don't listen. We're trying to keep the candy down and we're going to keep the kids in our house, stuff like that. We're going to listen. They're going to throw it here. There ain't nothing left. They all pick that up. I don't know whether you've got an answer or not. <laughs> I guess we'll find out on second about 10 o'clock. Yeah, second about 10 o'clock. Or, or if you send in a, uh, what do you want to call it, the application of whether they send it back to you? Okay. Well, we do have to share it this year. I mean, I personally just think that this is what it's going to be. More designed for the kids and, and, and the local schools and the bands and the football team. And like well, my only thought that that, that was uh, a prelude to Halloween and the kids got a lot of candy uh, off of the parade and off of the politicians, um, even though there were no speeches. Um, but I'll yield to whatever the majority wants. I'd rather just watch it from this time. Anything else? Go ahead. Um, I can set up a booth in front of my place for uh, people to come and talk to council members. Well, there's another opportunity. Oh, I'm sorry, Dan. Okay. Um, I actually agree that during the Who you represent. I think that's very important because a lot of people, anybody can get on Facebook and anything, or bring us things about council members and whatnot. But I think the positive image for you guys to project, and you're not campaigning or anything like that, but they need to know that council is also in support of the Derby Black Festival. That's just my two cents. Go ahead. I, I,
I mean, it would give them a face. So that if they saw somebody in the grocery store, they could say, you're on council. I have it. That's all I want. That's all I want you to want. <laughs> well, we'll, uh, we'll let it go with that, and, and, you know, I guess you can make your own arrangements to, uh, to do that. Unless uh, Mr. Tipton gets his tractor running and gets the, uh, gets, gets the wagon ready to roll, we can all put our rocking chair up there. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Guys, if not, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Let me write that down. And Eggleston was the second? Yes. Councilman wrote, oh wait, hold on. Councilwoman Okowski? Yes. Councilman Cobb? Yes. Councilman Roadwald? Yes. Vice Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilwoman Eggleston? Yes. Motion to adjourn, accepted 6-0.